Julie is the head of the Department of Geology in the Ministry of Mineral Resources and Labor since 2015. Julie earned her PhD in 2009 at the University of Edinburgh, after which she spent a couple of years in academia before embarking on a career as a mapping geologist for the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland and the Northern Territory, as well as the Western Australian Survey Organizations. Julie, welcome to the stage. Thank you very much, Anna. And if you're wondering how I packed all that in since 2009, I actually got my PhD in 2000. <laughs> um, all right. That's fine. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about mineral potential in Greenland now. So to begin with, all of these commodities have something in common. And that is they have all been mined or are currently being mined. In Greenland. There's, there has been mining in Greenland since the 1800s and today as you may know there are two operating mines. Um, we have a ruby and pink sapphire mine and also a feldspar mine on the west coast. And these commodities, well there are significant occurrences of all of these commodities in Greenland as well as others. This is our uh, mineral occurrence map of Greenland and you can come and have a closer look at our booth 417 if you're interested in more detail. We have geologists there who can talk to you about this. Um, and we have around 700 mineral occurrences described in some detail in the mineral occurrence database, which is available online. And these occurrences include a spectrum of different commodities and mineralization types. So this begins to give you a bit of a taste for, uh, for Greenland's mineral prospectivity and that it's actually quite interesting. <coughs> but it's not just the range of commodities and mineralization types. There are a lot of other factors that make Greenland quite exciting in terms of, of prospectivity. So one point I want to make is that in this age where discoveries are increasingly difficult to come by, uh, Greenland remains a frontier exploration region. Almost all of the 410,000 square kilometres of exposed land in Greenland is Greenfields exploration territory. So this is a place where large world-class deposits can still be found. So here's an example. Uh, this is data in a model that was developed based on TEM, magnetic and magnetotelluric data, for ground that's now being explored by another licensee. And the, uh, the target here is Norilsk Talnak style magmatic nickel in the Paleogene magmatic rocks on Disco Island in central West Greenland. This is a deep target, but it's also a really big target. It's about 10 kilometers by one and a half kilometers. What's also exciting is that Greenland's geology covers a huge age range, almost the entire history of the Earth. And that's significant for its mineral potential because there are distinct periods in Earth history that are associated with, um, with mineralization of different kinds. For example, orogenic gold is typically associated with neo to Mesoarchaean rocks. Porphyry deposits are all younger than about 500 million years. And sedimentary hosted copper also falls into distinct time periods of formation. So Greenland has mineral occurrences of a large range of types in significant part because its geology spans such a long time period. It has some of the oldest rocks in the world, including the almost 4 billion year old huge low-grade iron ore deposit at uh, Isua. But the bulk of Greenland is also um, either paleo to neo archaean crust. So not, all, not only all of that pink area, which comprises the North Atlantic Credon, but all of the orange rocks uh, further to the north, on the west, and on the southeast coast, and extending right underneath the ice, right up into, to, to the edge of the ice in North Greenland. These are all archaean rocks. And as I'll cover, we also have origins, rifts, 
sedimentary basins and intrusions that cover the spectrum from Proterozoic right through to the Cenozoic. So because Greenland's rocks span such a long time period, there's also a diverse range of geological environments, which in turn means that there's mineral potential for a diverse range of commodities and mineralization styles. Parts of the Archean are prospective for orogenic gold, magmatic nickel sulfides, chromite, titanium vanadium, and in a range of geological environments such as those that you can see illustrated here. We also have a series of Proterozoic orogenic belts, including the juvenile Catalidian origin in South Greenland, and other Proterozoic origins, including the Nastikidian origin in West Greenland, which, is, uh, which extends under the ice to the correlative Masalik mobile belt in the southeast, and further north on the west coast, the Rinkian origin, all of these have deformed and metamorphosed older Archean rocks. And then also the Inglefield mobile belt in the far northwest Greenland. So if I, I go to the Inglefield mobile belt, um, in the northwest we have prospectivity and occurrences of lead zinc, cobalt, copper gold and silver and potential for IOCG deposits. Further south, in the Karat region, we have Proterozoic metasedimentary rocks and metavolcanics overlying Archean basement. And here we have strong zinc prospectivity. And this is where many of you will know the old Black Angel Memorial, Memorial Mine is located. And if you're interested, you're welcome to come by the booth and pick up a zinc data package for that region. The juvenile Proterozoic Calidian origin in South Greenland is highly prospective for gold. Marked in red are the known gold occurrences, <coughs> including the Nalanac deposit, which was mined and continues to be held under a mining license. And there are other highly prospective areas nearby, such as the Varga Prospect. Uh, and both of these, Nalanac and Varga, are held under <coughs> license by Nalanac. Also in South Greenland, we saw the initial stages of rifting in the Mesa Proterozoic, leading to the emplacement of alkaline magmatic rocks of the Garda province, which are shown in these dark red colours here. And this includes intrusions strongly enriched in rare earth elements and uranium, but also zirconium, tantalum, niobium and zinc, which you'll hear more about in presentations from Tanbury's and Greenland Minerals. And there continues to be um, much prospectivity for rare earth elements throughout this belt. The Cal Caledonian origin in East Greenland relates to the collision around 400 million years ago of East Grand Greenland, which was then part of North America, with Europe, resulting in a fold and thrust belt and a series of granite intrusions. This orogeny deformed basement paleo and neo, neo proterozoic supercrustal rocks, and large-scale structures along the Caledonines are host to a wide range of commodities, including tin, tungsten, gold, lead, and zinc. And neo proterozoic and younger rocks in East Greenland are also highly prospective for sedimentary hosted copper. Moving further north and overlapping in time with the Caledonian orogeny is the Cambrian to Devonian shallow marine Franklinian basin in North Greenland. <coughs> Here, there's zinc anomalism on a regional scale related to both SEDEX and Mississippi Valley type mineralization. And this is where the Citrono Fjord deposit lies in the, in the far northeast, which has been developed by Ironbark zinc. And if you're interested in the Franklinian Basin and zinc prospectivity in this region, you can also pick up a zinc data package from our booth, 417. In West Greenland, we have diamond-bearing kimberlites and ilakites that are neoprotozoic and younger. 
Greenland is the source of the largest diamond recovered in early exploration in the North American Shield area, and it has all of the geological requirements to expect diamond, but considerable areas are almost completely unexplored. In the middle of this year, we expect to release a new diamond data compilation for Greenland, which builds on an earlier version uh, from the early 2000s. And this is important now because the diamond industry is picking up, particularly in Australia and Southern Africa, and there is a shortfall in production. While the summary maps <coughs> that are shown here extend from Cap Farvel in the south to Apernovik in the north on the west coast, the final product will also include locations from North and East Greenland. We have a Paleogene large igneous province in East and West Greenland, which you can see in these uh, dark blue-gray colors. And this province has associated molybdenum and gold-enriched porphyries, such as Malmbjerg and Flamfjell. And also the Skjærgård gold platinum group in element enriched layered intrusion, as well as potential for neurosical style magmatic nickel. And let's look at what we might expect in terms of economic mineral deposits in Greenland if we compare with correlative geology in Arctic Canada and Scandinavia. In Arctic Canada we have, as you can see, correlative Archean basement and paleoproduct Paleoproterozoic origins. We have similar alkaline magnetism associated with diamonds, and we have the Franklinian Basin, which hosts a rich <coughs> zinc. We know we have a lot of mineral occurrences of different types. It's very much <coughs> underexplored, and we have free data available, available for you. And that's where Anna will take us on our next talk. Thank you very much. So, I'll now introduce Anna, who you've been seeing all, all morning. Anna is a structural <coughs> geologist with a PhD from the University of Glasgow in Scotland. She joined the Ministry of Mineral Resources and Labour for the Government of Greenland almost two years ago, and has been working on marketing Greenland's mineral potential, advising the government and other authorities and stakeholders on mineral exploration, managing all of our exploration data, and she also plays an active part in the government geoscience mapping programs. 